Rajiv DeMello is head of Asian Investments at Western Asset Management, which is one of the world's largest fixed income managers and also a unit of Leg Mason. And Rajiv joins us this morning from our Singapore Bureau. Welcome, Rajiv, uh, to our program in this year of the tire. I guess the, the obvious you, initial Susan. question is uh, people want to know, will this trend continue? Will corporate bonds, especially these junk quality ones, continue to beat out the returns that we're seeing for stocks? Yeah, I mean, corporate bonds definitely are benefiting from a, from a very positive set of factors, and we think that they will continue these set of factors going into this year. Um, you know, you mentioned the extremely high returns, and your chart showed them last year. Uh, last year, of course, was an exceptional year with a rebound from the previous year. But even looking forward to this year, we think that the returns will be good. The underpinnings are twofold. One, it's global. It's this mm -hmm. famous Goldilocks scenario where growth is recovering, but it's not recovering too fast to have the major central banks tighten monetary policy. We don't think that uh, the Fed's going to tighten until very late uh, this year, if at all. We don't think the ECB is going to tighten, and we don't think the Bank of Japan will, will move towards the upside. If anything, it might loosen further. So with that backdrop, that's extremely good for liquidity into the overall credit markets. Add that the strength that you mentioned as well in Asia, the economic up, you know, upturn, which is definitely you know, going on and which we think will continue throughout the year, that, that gives a very good mix for, the, uh, for high yield as well as investment grade bonds. And the spreads yeah. still offer a premium over U.S. and uh, Euro similar quality bonds. Now, this is what I find interesting, Rajiv, because you're favoring these U.S. dollar-denominated Asian corporate bonds compared to the sovereigns at this point. Why? Because the yield is more compelling to you? Yes. I mean, uh, the yields are, are definitely more compelling. Um, in the Asian sovereigns, of course, there are, two, there are two, uh, two sectors of the market. One is the domestic uh, local currency bonds, and the other one is the dollar sovereigns. The domestic uh, local currency bonds, which is a far broader market, um, do offer yields, but, however, they do have the risk of seeing some tighter monetary policy uh, across mm -hmm. the region. And we do, do think that central banks will tighten. A lot is priced in the curve, but it is still a more mixed environment than the one which is definitely favorable for investment grade and high yielding bonds. In fact, this most recent sell off in the global risky markets, you know, triggered by the events in Greece and furthered by a couple of other, other events which, which hit the risky uh, markets, um, really gives one, we think, a pretty good entry point to, uh, to increase uh, positions in uh, investment rate and high yield bonds. Okay, so I guess there's an upcoming opportunity. This is the uh, opportunity that if you aren't already in these uh, high yielders, in these high yielding corporate bonds, that uh, maybe this is the time to join in. What about those that are already holding these corporate bonds? Should they add to their positions? Yes, I mean, on, on weaknesses, we, we've had a few, um, you know, brief periods of weakness uh, in the last uh, three months, which have given opportunities. Uh, the the Dubai, Dubai crisis in uh, early December, late November was one such opportunity, though it was extremely brief. And then the, the, more, the lengthier, you know, crisis that we've, we had coming out of Greece uh, also caused a sell-off in, uh, in some of these corporate bonds. But other opportunities are the, the new issue market. Um, we will see new issuance by high yielders as well as by investment grade uh, issuers in the next couple of weeks, we believe. And that should offer investors the opportunity to be able to, to, to participate in these new issues, which, which often will have a new issue discount as well, so uh, allowing you to get in at, at good levels. Mm. Okay, well, Rajiv, let's break it down then. You mentioned those two groups of high-yielding corporate bonds, also investment-grade uh, corporate bonds. Uh, let's, so let's break it down, I guess, uh, by division and start off first with the high-yielders because some of the high-yielding bonds, the corporate names that you like, uh, include a lot of commodity companies. Uh, for instance, we have uh, Indonesian coal producers such as Bumi Resources and Adaro Energy. And you also like bonds of forest products company uh, such as Sino Forest. So let me just ask you why the bias towards these commodity related bonds first off? Well, you know, the, uh, the upswing that we saw in China based on the, uh, the government stimulus package uh, almost 15 months ago, uh, which began almost 15 months ago, is, is still ongoing. Even though there is some slowing of new projects, ongoing projects will continue for a while. And so we think that um, 
you know that that infrastructure boost will will suck in a lot of imports imports of energy such as coal and that's why we like uh, in the, these, these some of these Indonesian coal companies and will also uh, you know be be good for lumber and uh, that's why we like uh, you know the sino forest uh, issue as well Okay, but we think three, that the overall macro situation in China is also positive, and um, you know, even if there's some cooling, some cooling measures taking place right now, mm -hmm. we don't think it'll put the economy at significant risk.